Long Talk Radio. He took an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. By some, he's been called controversial. I'll keep my freedom. I'll keep my guns. Try to keep my money and my religion too. Now, now, keep in mind that some of my guests have been approached by old Homeland Security or FBI saying, Oh, uh, why are you going on the Clay Douglas show? My message to those guys that they're listening this morning is, Go get a cup of coffee, maybe you'll learn something. We both took the same oath, you know, to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I don't recall there being an expiration date on that. I'm gonna keep my big VA. Keep my friends the same. Keep the government out of my business and y'all can keep the chain. He is the free American, Clay Douglas. We know what we need. We know who to blame. Catch the Free American Hour, weekdays at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. podcast and more details, visit www.freeamerican.com or catch the podcast by phone by calling 832-999-8621. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, Clay Douglas. The Free American, and that's exactly what I've been since 1994 when I adopted that name, when I took on that name, when I started the Free American Magazine and this radio show. Now, I almost instantly ran into opposition when I started the militias in New Mexico. One day, no big deal, no big deal, we had meetings, had over 500 people attend, heard people like Mark Cornkey speak, heard people like uh, Charles Duke out of, out of uh, I mean, we, we, had, we had everything. We, we started the uh, Wake Up America meetings in Albuquerque, and I started the Free American at the same time to promote that group. Almost exactly what I'm doing right now. I am in Austin, Texas, and we have the Truth Seekers meeting. It's up at the top of my website. We've started the Truth Seekers. Actually, the Truth Seekers was already here, and I spoke to him many times while I was publishing the Free America. I'm here now, and unlike Tucson, now Tucson was interesting. They had a group there called uh, the Breakfast Club, Tucson Breakfast Club. Now this group had been established for 40 years, almost. Carl was a friend of mine, he, he was doing the work and they had 30, 40 people show up there in the mornings, uh, breakfast at Mimi's. And Carl died and I broke down in Tucson and came there. And some Zionists came into that, were established there, and uh, <laughs> I didn't rip anybody off, you lying sack of crud there. I didn't rip anybody off. Never took nothing from nobody. So that's a lie, and now uh, you've exposed yourself, and he's gone. But it's this, this kind of thing. Oh, oh, you know, Clay was selling that book to raise money for a snitch named Wavos. <laughs> don't know any snitch named Wavos. Don't raise any money for anybody but me. And I do raise money for me. This is not, you know, this is no more. Yeah, that's what I said. Wait, was right, Charles? I man, I you know, no, I I don't have I don't like Mexican food for breakfast. No, 
No, no, some snitch uh, named Bravos that was in the Devil's Disciples, and uh, I never, uh, long gone in prison before I ever got there, never knew him, never, but that was the rumor that was started. That was the rumor that was started. And uh, this is the way they work. Oh, Clay Douglas started the militias. Now, where did that come from? Where did that come from? We did start the militia. We did go to the NRA's shooting range up there, uh, northern northern uh, New Mexico. We did go there, and I did pay a trainer to come there and train me 30, 40 men, including my sons, teenage sons. And we went there, we had a good time, we shot, we learned how to use a weapon properly. We learned that, we learned that. That was the extent on the NRA range, that was the extent of the activities of the militia in New Mexico. And we did have a meeting, we did have a meeting, folks, in Governor Gary Johnson's office. He knew who we were, and we worked for him. Basically, we worked for him. To show you the kind of thing, when the FBI put me out in a uh, bulletin, such a guide to right-wing extremists, there were people listed in there, the chief of being, among them being the chief of the police in, in New Mexico. This was put out by the FBI. And the I made two phone calls. The first was to Gary Johnson. And I said, Gary, I think somebody's trying to get me killed here. Look, the FBI just put out this bulletin. He said, don't worry about it, Clay. I said, well, that's easy for you to say, Governor. You know, but... He said, don't worry. Don't worry, man. The next day, I mean, look. Okay, there. Uh, yes, you can still go there. Yeah, it's working. Uh, there's other people listening right now, so. Uh, That's copied off of the website. At any rate, now these th these rumors started in in Tucson, where he's raising money. Well, he's a cop car. He said this. He said that. Some, nothing that there was provable. Nothing that uh, nothing that uh, you know. You know I mean, if you can call saying uh, uh, I just saw this guy punch out two people over here, and uh, he tried to pick a fight with me outside here, and I don't think you can handle it. What's yours? They attacked me in the biker community because I'd published mo biker magazines, written for Easy Rider, written for Motorcycle Industry, and published two biker magazines of my own, so they attacked me there. They ended up getting uh, threatening my advertisers and shutting us down. All of this is written about in my book, Mystery Babylon, which I have signed our copies available by the end of this week. The uh, what I've been through the last eight years is almost unbelievable. As a matter of fact, it is all it's so unbelievable that this could happen in America to a veteran. It's a uh, my fiction, my fiction books <laughs> are actually more believable than my non-fiction, Mystery of Babylon. 
But as a result of that, it, uh, eight years of fighting, of fighting, trying to reestablish the free American of trying to put a family together after a wreck I wasn't supposed to live through. Supposed to, was not supposed to be able to live through this. Anybody injured that badly couldn't possibly live. And yet I did. In fairly good health. But I was attacked there. Now this, this group in, in Tucson, the Breakfast Club, had three people of Jewish persuasion in there. They were treated very well. They were they were allowed to speak. They were allowed to speak. They got up and they, they had just as much access. Okay. Sorry about that. If you can't call in, I don't know what to tell you. I got people in the in the room right now that uh, have called in, that did call in, and um, we're still uh, we're still broadcasting. And I don't know what to tell you. Don't know what to tell you. Nine run six. Four six nine one five eight seven seven four is the call in number. Let's see if we can figure that out here real quick. Let's see what we got. got through it works folks in uh, you folks in the chat room it works well then I uh, don't know what to tell you it works for me now what happens when you uh, this is a distraction and you're about to go Now, that's what they do. That is what these Zionists do. They come in, they infiltrate a, they infiltrate a movement, and they're just there. You, they're the tares in the wheat. You don't know who they are. Seems like a nice guy. Yeah, here's a hundred bucks, man. I make a donation. Yeah, yeah, I could uh, use you to come over here and do my computer. And then I'm going to talk about you behind your back. And then uh, we're going to try to remove you from a position of power. We're going to try. You, you've been booking people. You've been running the thing. Well, we're going to we're going to talk behind your back. And we're going to get it moved to somewhere else. We're going to go somewhere else. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. This is how they work. This is how they work, and it has to be stopped. Now, now, when they came after me for starting the militias, folks, me and a bunch of guys that sold guns for a living, that uh, used guns for a living, including police officers and ex-military and ex-sheriffs and veterans, we all went to a shooting range and we took a class. I called the governor up. He said, don't worry. The next day, I called the chief of police up, chief of state police in New Mexico. Don't remember his name offhand. And he says, 
Don't worry about it, Clay. I said, Chief, you know, you guys keep telling me that. Well, I am worried about it. He said, Clay, I've been reading your magazine for ten years. You don't have a thing to worry about for me and any of my men. Besides that, the governor recalled all of those booklets from every police station in New Mexico yesterday. This is uh, this is the way they operate. Now, yesterday we talked about this. Sixteen Joint Chiefs have come up and said Israel is a threat here. And if you, whether you're a Christian Zionist who believes in Israel, or you're a Jew that tends to benefit from wars, from pharmaceuticals. I, and, and I don't care whether you're a, a, a fish doctor with a sparkling reputation and a sparkling uh, Mercedes Benz. You are a criminal. You're living off of drug profits. You're living and you're killing people left and right. You are evil. And... This is what we have to fight, and we have to fight it, folks, without becoming evil. Now, what I do, and the way I fight is this way. I come on a radio, I, I do a television show, I tell you what is going on. I have been reading, I, I read every day, I read everything here. And... Uh, I share those stories, those articles, those people that I've met, that I've found. I share that with you. Now, Norm Chomsky, and I believe he's Jewish too, he says the media's job is manufacturing consent. One day they do, one way they do this is by trying to make the public applaud on command just as Pavlov trained his dogs to salivate on command. The, Media mind controllers have been manufacturing synthetic applause and synthetic laughter ever since the American sound engineer Charles Charlie Douglas invented the laugh track back in the uh, early 50s. Whenever Big Brother's mouthpiece fails to get the audience to cheer or laugh at the right moment, the sound engineer inserts a laugh track or an applause track in hopes that the people watching at home or joining the ersatz cheering or hilarity. The mind controllers know that people tend to cheer when people cheer and laugh when other people laugh. The Zionist-dominated media has been working overtime for more than a decade to manufacture public consent to the 9-11 triggered war on Islam, the destruction of constitutional liberties, the gradual transition to a totally controlled, surveilled, microchip society. They want us to cheer for li war, lies, and unfreedom, and boo the truth. And folks, that's what they have tried to do to me. Oh, Clay Douglas started a militia. Never mentioned the government. Who, by the way, is running for president? Gary Johnson is running for president. And if you don't vote for Gary Johnson now, if you fall back into that Republican Democrat trap, then, then you know you're gonna you got you get the government you deserve. You either get a Zionist-dominated Mitt Romney, who controls the media, Clear Channel. Or you get the Muslim promoting Democrats. Oh, God, we got to choose between Nazis and communists all over again. And, folks, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm trying to stop here. I can see what the whole plan is. My God, folks, it's 150 years old. They, they planned it while they were...
pitting the north against the south. Man, you got to fight your brothers. You got to fight your cousins. You got to you got to do this. That was our first mind control trip. North versus south. The south will rise again. It should never have fallen. There should never have been a fault there any more than uh, you know we should invade Oklahoma because they beat us in fucking football. Come on. Now what I've been telling you is the same thing. Now, 16 intelligence agencies are telling you about the Zionist-controlled state of Israel. We're funding it, we're sending them billions upon billions of dollars, and, and we're borrowing the money from them, from the Zionists, and the Rothschilds, and the English. We're borrowing the money to send it out in foreign aid to 175 countries. We're borrowing the money to bail out banks. And the Zionist media ain't telling you nothing. And at the same time, we got a war on drugs going on. Right? The war on drugs started before the war on terror. The war on terror is a war against anyone anywhere in the world that doesn't want to go along with one world banking. The war on drugs was a way to go against anybody that uh, could actually think. And uh, yes, they do kill every president that's opposed them. They tried to kill Andrew Jackson, who. Uh, had it put on his tombstone that I killed the bank until he was dead. And um, Kennedy uh, did too. We, we, yes, all that is true. Now, I've told you about this. I've tried to tell you over and over again about the plot for one world government. It was right there, folks. And, and, and let me explain to you how long I've been doing this. And I came back after the after the accident took me. I took two of my publications out. This wasn't an accident. After the accident, I tried to get the free market started again, but with the age of the internet, it didn't happen. You know, some people rise to their own level of incompetence. Mine might be the internet. I'm I'm an old school, you know, cut and paste, paper cement, you know, rubber cement, whatever, Zacto knife. We uh, and that's kind of the way I started the Free America. kind of the way I started the Free America. Let me see here. The, I'll try to find that. I warned you then. Council on Foreign Relations, they're talking about one world government. They're talking, you know, here's the quotes from the one world government people themselves. Here's a quote from Benjamin Friedman, a uh, Jew, uh, who was Jewish, and exposed the whole Zionist plot behind World War II. And, of course, uh, he was probably killed and put out, uh, too. So, we're... We've been fighting this war a long time. They put, uh, back in the 50s, in World War II, they, they were both sides. We communists, we were allied with Russia. We were allied with the communists. We were allied with Joe Stalin, who killed millions of white Christian Russians. And they tried to make Russians into the enemy. They were the enemy. The Zionists were. The Zionists were the ones who killed them. The Jews were the ones that ran it. Now, here is what I wrote in 1994, August, September, issue of the Free American. This is what I wrote. This is what I did. I had to start the Free American and the militia at the same time. 
I said throughout our history, we've been warned about threats to our country and our freedom, from taxation by the English, the danger presented by the Nazis to the menace of communism. Today, some would have you believe there is no threat, that we are at peace and America rules the world. The truth is that America is under siege from without and within. Two hundred years of self-rule and democracy are on the verge of collapsing. Some believe it is a price we must pay for growth and civilization. They talk of a new world order and a global economy. Others, many of whose words you will read in this paper, believe it is much more sinister than mere progress, that the state of our economy, our national debt, the crime, rate of the rising taxes and inflation are the result of a conspiracy that is centuries old and has taken a firm root in our country from siege planted a hundred years ago. Whether you believe in conspiracies or not, the crisis we are facing is very real. Our government is taking our money and using immigrants that we cannot, when we cannot even feed our own poor or provide housing for homeless Americans, it is raising the price of doing business until our businessmen, farmers, and ranchers can no longer cover their overhead. It hypnotizes you with pretty pictures on TV while it picks your pocket. You are being taught to fear your neighbors when you should be joining hands with them. Your ability and will to protect yourself is being undermined to force you to accept the protection of a police state. For the sake of your freedom, your family, and question and your, for the sake of your freedom and your family, question your politicians and representatives about the bills now pending before the House and Senate. Research everything you read within these pages. Then use the rights your forefathers fought for while you still have them. Exercise your right to free speech and the right to uh, assembly to tell your friends and neighbors what you've learned. Above all, read everything you can and don't forget to read between the lines. Now, folks, find something wrong with that. Find something wrong with that statement. This is what I wrote in 1994. I published that ten years. I published that. Now, I have, after the accident, after uh, the accident, I fell victim. I fell victim to the uh, psychological warfare that was being waged on me. They took away my support from my advertisers. They took away by what? Shared play for started the militia. Play drained a bunch of people on one Sunday at the NRA range. In other words, folks, I haven't done anything. Wrong. I haven't done. I have uh, have not cooperated with their system because I don't agree with the system. It is not our Constitution, it is not, and our Founding Fathers have warned us, if you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, the banks and the, and the corporations that spring up around them will leave your children homeless in the land that we conquered. This was 250 years ago, possibly, when uh, they created this. They created this document, this Constitution. I took an oath to defend, you did too. If you're in law enforcement, if you're a soldier, you took an oath to defend it too. Now, does it say in that oath that you, if, uh, if you're blowing a whistle on the Zionist control of your media and propaganda and armed services and weapons 